Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to look at Aurora. Now if you've never heard the term Aurora before, maybe you're new to the AWS space, it is Amazon's own proprietary database. It's been deliberately sort of architected to compete with Oracle and Microsoft's high-end databases while still having the flexibility uh, and open source parameters of things like MySQL and PostgreSQL. So that's what Amazon Aurora is. It's a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database engine that combines the speed and availability of high-end commercial databases with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of open source databases. So basically, like I said, just think of it as um, they've taken MySQL and PostgreSQL and just made it much more reliable. You get all the features of a high-end commercial database, so you get all the features that you might get with an Oracle database or a Microsoft SQL Server, but it's way more cost effective than your open uh, than those databases. It's more like open source. So Amazon Aurora provides up to five times better performance than MySQL and three times times better performance than PostgreSQL databases at a much lower price point while delivering similar performance and availability. So three things to know about Aurora. It starts with 10 gigs and it scales in 10 gig increments all the way up to 64 terabytes of storage. And it does this using storage auto scaling. So it does it automatically. Number two, we have compute resources that can scale up to 32 vCPUs and 250, 244 gigs of memory. And then we've got two copies of your data, which is contained in each availability zone with a minimum of three availability zones, um, giving you six copies of your data. Scaling Aurora, Aurora is designed to transparently handle the loss of up to two copies of data without affecting the write availability of your database and up to three copies with Without affecting the read availability. So you can lose a couple of availability zones and still not have any issues on performance. Aurora storage is also self-healing, so data blocks and disks are continuously scanned for errors and repaired automatically. And there's three different types of Aurora replicas available. We've got our normal Aurora replicas. They're fit, there's currently 15 uh, available per Aurora database. We then have up to five MySQL read replicas, and then you can also have one PostgreSQL read replicas. So these are read replicas on top of your normal Aurora production database. Quickly just go through this table, uh, it compares the Amazon Aurora replicas to MySQL replicas. So like I just said, you can have 15 Aurora replicas and five MySQL replicas. Both do asynchronous replication, but Aurora read replicas do this in milliseconds, where uh, MySQL does it in seconds. The performance impact on the primary, so if you have an Aurora read replica behind an Aurora uh, database, it doesn't really affect performance much at all whereas MySQL is going to have a much higher performance impact. The replica location, however, for Amazon Aurora replicas is still in region, whereas MySQL read replicas can be cross-region. They can both act as a failover target, um, and Aurora won't give you any data loss, but with MySQL, because of the lag, there can be potentially minutes of data loss. With Aurora, you do get automatic failover from your Aurora primary to your read replica, with MySQL, um, you also get automatic failover. However, you can have a few minutes worth of data loss, whereas with Amazon Aurora, they guarantee that you will not. Failover is automated with Aurora, whereas with MySQL, it's not. A uh, good thing about MySQL, though, is you get support for user-defined replication delay. So you may want to um, have a replication delay of 5 or 10 minutes to another region, whereas Aurora is instantaneous, or you can't put in a 5 or 10-minute window for a replication delay just yet. But who knows, they might add that as a feature set going uh, further down the track. And there's support for different data types, um, schemas or primaries. Um, Amazon Read Aurora does not support different data types or schemas um, versus the primary database, um, whereas MySQL does support it. Moving on to backups with Aurora, automated backups are always enabled on Amazon Aurora database instances and backups do not impact database performance. You can also take snapshots with Aurora. Again, this does not impact on performance and you can share Aurora snapshots with a other AWS accounts. And let's just talk briefly about Amazon Aurora serverless because this will definitely come up in your exam. This is basically an on-demand auto-scaling configuration for MySQL uh, compatible and PostgreSQL compatible editions of Amazon Aurora. 
an Aurora serverless database cluster automatically starts up, shuts down, and scales capacity up or down based on your application's need. So where would you actually use this? Well, it basically provides a relatively simple, cost-effective option for infrequent, intermittent, or unpredictable workloads. So if you've got a scenario-based question where you want to save as much money as possible, you have no idea when people are going to be accessing your website, it needs to um, scale uh, automatically, so it'd still be uh, very production-ready, um, and it also needs to be able to cope with unpredictable workloads, and that is where you're going to use Aurora Serverless. Now, we will have a whole section on serverless coming up in the course. One thing I should say to you about serverless is the great thing about it is you only pay per invocation. So you're only incurring a cost when someone's actually trying to access your website. If you compare that to something like, say, EC2 or RDS, where you're paying either by the hour or by the minute, you're still always paying a cost per unit of time. With serverless, the way it works is you're only paying on a per invocation basis, or in some cases on a per 1 million invocation basis. Um, that's AWS Lambda, and we will look at that later on in the course. So when um, serverless is very, very powerful in that um, you're not paying by the minute, you're not paying by the hour, you're only incurring a cost when someone's actually accessing your website. So if you do see a database scenario question where it's saying, hey, you need a really um, you know, high performance good database but for as cheap as possible then look at Aurora serverless so we're going to go over and have a look at Aurora in the AWS console we deleted our MySQL read replica a couple of uh, lectures ago we're just going to pick up with our MySQL database I'm going to show you how to migrate a MySQL database over to an Aurora database and then we'll look at my exam tips Okay, so here I am in the AWS console. You can see that uh, my RDS instance, my read replica has been deleted successfully. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to actions and I'm going to go ahead and create an Aurora read replica of my RDS instance. And this is going to take my MySQL database and it's going to make it an Aurora read replica. And you can create the replica in a different availability zone if you want. I am going to do that. I'm just going to call my DB instance identifier a cloud guru Aurora and then I'm going to scroll down I'm going to leave basically everything else as default uh, I'm not going to turn on encryption I'm going to leave backups on for one day and I'm going to go ahead and create my read replica and so that is now creating an Aurora read replica and you can see it in here so we've got a, a, a cloud guru Aurora cluster and it's going ahead and creating my reader read replicas, which are a read replica of this. So that is going to take some time. So I'm just going to pause the video and wait for this to come back up online. Okay, so that has now finished. And you can see here, we've got our Aurora cluster. And inside our cluster, we've got two nodes. We've got a writer node, and then we've got a reader node. And you'll notice that they're in separate availability zones. And if we click on the writer node and actually click inside it, we'll be able to see the DNS endpoint. The writer node has a different DNS endpoint to the reader node. So they are definitely um, separate databases in separate availability zones with separate DNS endpoints. Now what you can do is you can go over to your writer node and you can go to actions and then you can go and promote this read replica. So you can um, go ahead and, and you can do this to the reader node as well. I am going to promote this read replica. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Um, that again is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, but once that's done, essentially what's happened is that we have migrated our database from a MySQL database to an Aurora database simply by creating a read replica and then promoting that database uh, to its own standalone database. Another thing we can do is we can go in and take a snapshot of our Aurora database and then we can restore a new Aurora database from that snapshot. So there's a few ways in which you can migrate uh, your MySQL workloads to Aurora. Um, but the great thing is, is it doesn't involve any, um, you don't have to go in and copy uh, from one database to another. Amazon take care of it all for you. You can do it all through the management console. So feel free to go back to your databases section if you don't want to wait for that uh, instance to be promoted to a primary instance and feel free to go through and start deleting your clusters uh, as well as your MySQL database. We don't need them anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and hit stop and then I'm going to go through and delete that as well. Also, don't forget to go over to EC2 and to delete your EC2 instance as well. So on to my exam tips. So on to my exam tips. We always have two 
So on to my Aurora exam tips. And just remember that you've got two copies of your data and they're contained in each availability zone with a minimum of three availability zones. So two times three means you've got six copies of your data. You can share Aurora snapshots with other AWS accounts. You get three different types of replicas available. We've got Aurora read replicas, which is 15 you can have. MySQL, you can have five. And then PostgreSQL, you can have one. And remember that automated failover is always avail is only available with Amazon Aurora replicas. Remember that Aurora has automated backups turned on by default. You can also take snapshots with Aurora and you can share these snapshots with other AWS accounts. When you do take these snapshots, it's not going to impact on your production data database. And then finally, remember what Aurora serverless is and the use cases for it. It's basically, um, it's a serverless database and it's where you want simple cost-effective options for infrequent, in intermittent or unpredictable workloads. So that is it for this lecture, everyone. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture.